Hello, welcome back to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2013. Uh, Ted Timmons, you're here from Lionhead. I am. You've got a, you've got a little treat for us today. Yes, uh, we're showing off Fable Anniversary for the first time. And to start with, we're just going to show you the smart glass experience because we feel we're doing something that hasn't really been done before with smart glass on the Xbox 360. Awesome. So we'll have a look at Fable Anniversary footage for the first time in just a yeah. few minutes. Uh, but first of all, please yeah, show us what's going it. on here. So basically, when this is linked to your Xbox, you can just click on your hero and it will tell you your objective and uh, what, you, what you need to do to proceed in the, in the level. As you play through the game, you'll actually see your hero walk along the path. One of the things that I think is really cool about this particular app is that if you click on the camera, it will show you what Fable 1 looked like 10 years ago. Oh, wow. So it's our way of giving that sort of past and present look in the, in the game. And obviously that was a massive success for Halo, but we felt we should do something slightly different and use the power of smart glass to achieve that. And the great thing about smart glass is it's free. You know, anyone with a smart device, whether that's a tablet or a phone, can very easily just download it and, and play it straight away. So I'll guide you through some of the other stuff. Uh, in this particular quest that we're going to show you, there's chess chest you click on it actually just tells you what's in it so it's also part strategy guide so mm. anyone who's playing at home I like the idea that they can set up the map just next to them on the side as they're playing through they can watch their hero uh, run through the quest and then whenever they feel like they need just that extra bit of information they can interact with it so I'll show you the next bit as well uh, for anyone that's familiar with fable of course the demon door is always really really important you can click on the demon door Gives, it actually tells you uh, what you need and what requirements to get in. Mm. So we're actually working very closely with Prima on this because yeah. we appreciate that. that uh, sorry, we appreciate that some people might uh, just not want the spoilers. Yeah, so we're sure. working with them to work out, you know, how is the best way that we can get this experience to players without entirely spoiling it for them. So I'll show you one of the last really cool things in this. Um, if I go to the boss fight, which you'll see shortly uh, with Twinblade. If you actually look, uh, you can actually see that there's some uh, background story mm. on Twinblade that you actually don't get in the game. You've got a nice bit of concept of the actual how he looked in uh, Fable One, and the when we get back to the UK next week, when when this show, the yeah, show is over, once you've had, uh, had a couple yeah, of days rest, exactly. Uh, we really want to uh, implement an actual screenshot tool. Cool. So when we started on Fable Anniversary, one of the things I did was I went back and read all the original forums from 2004. Mm. I mean, that's the beauty of the internet. It's always permanent, it's, yeah, right? And it's well, always there. It's also the worst thing about the internet. Exactly. So uh, I went through, read it all. And what was amazing was back in 2004, people were taking photos with a camera, sending the film off to get developed, mm. getting the film back, then uh, scanning the photo in, and then with their 56K, uploading it. So yeah, I think this could be a really nice feature when we Awesome, well, thank you for showing us the Smart Glass yeah, integration. No and I think it's about time we had a look at Fable Anniversary uh, running for the very first time. Yes, this is really exciting for us because we actually haven't shown this off yet. My mm. Twitter feed all week has just been demanding <laughs> this. So I'm really grateful for you guys sparing the time. Not at all, thank you very much for bringing it along. So yeah, explain what's going on here in terms of um, this is obviously a, a, a recreation of the first game. Is yes. this a, a, in a graphical sense, mechanically? What have you guys so done? It's a full remastering. Obviously, visuals you can see instantly. It's a, we've updated absolutely everything: meshes, textures, the, the whole lot. We've, we've redone all the audio. Uh, Russell Shaw, the original composer, yeah. is still at Linehead. He's gone back, remastered everything for surround sound, so it sounds absolutely glorious. Widescreen support. You know, it seems so trivial these yeah, days to have widescreen, but back in uh, 2004, it was a pretty big deal. Um, what you can see my colleague here, he's actually opening a chest, he's going to grab a piece of clothing. And now this particular quest was where you first met Teresa. Mm. So we felt this was a really appropriate quest to bring to the show because it's a, you know, it's a fan favorite. Yeah, Teresa's obviously a major character. The before and after. Um, and to talk about some of the other things, uh, obviously you can still fart, you can still kick chickens, <laughs> you know that, but now it's in full, <laughs> full high definition glory. Uh, Just to remind, remind people as well, this is running on a, on a debug unit. This yes, is yeah, way, it's, way, very yeah, early. Exactly. So. The frame rate still can be a little bit choppy yeah. at times. We've got plenty of time to look at all that stuff. Really, we just wanted to bring it here and show the Fable fans that one of their favorite mm. games, uh, some, for some people ever, uh, as we found out this week, is it, being completely remastered for 360. So what were the biggest requests then from fans in, in having Fable back? Was it simply so they could just I mine think, achievements on their new console yeah. so they could see it in HD. I think a lot of people just sometimes want an excuse to replay one of their favorite For games. Sure. Um, I've been really enjoying working on the achievements. We'll be revealing more of, about those over the next uh, few weeks, but I think one of the things we've done with it that's really exciting is that Fable has always been about good and evil choice and consequence mm. and we've tried to actually put that into the achievements so it's a okay, bit weird okay. for now but i'm trying to tease it a little out there good and evil um, perhaps i'll also mention that uh, the save game system is completely new okay so the save game system was ropey let's mm. say at best uh, <clears throat> 
So any Fable fans will just be able to know that now they can save the game whenever they like. Again, doesn't sound like a big deal now, but mm. in 2004, it wasn't a very good experience. Uh, so in terms of making a game like this, uh, redoing it again, there's obviously a, maybe a, a desire to add content to it, to maybe take some of the lessons yeah. from sequels into it. So was there anything perhaps from the, the, the more recent Fable games that you guys have decided, you know what, maybe that could yeah. have been... So, we, so we've got a really good team working on this. Uh, I was actually a tester on the original title. Oh, Some cool. of the guys that I'm working with have worked on like Fable 2, Fable 3, Fable of Journey. So I'm looking at it very much from the perspective of the fanboy. Mm. I'm the guy that wants to throw in more content and change everything and you know, that kind of thing. But the guys who are keeping me grounded, you know, it's like we're, 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 we're walking rather than running, which is very sensible. So you guys trying to stick as close so, as possible yeah, to the Yeah, I mean, the things form? that we are looking at is providing the Fable 2 control scheme as an option. Okay. So we realize that, you know, there are people out there that are going to want to pl play it pure mm. in its, in its uh, old 2004 format. But I'd really like to be, uh, include the Fable 2 control scheme because I feel we really advanced mm. and we really improved it. And then also we're just... Looking at everything, really, the load times are going to be massively reduced. I mean, when the programmers asked me what the design was for the load screen, my reply was, what load screen? Mm. You know, that, that's how we're looking at these kind of things. Uh, I've seen Mr. Molyneux walking around uh, the various booths. Has he had a, a look at this yet? Has he yeah, wandered he popped over, over Obviously, friend of the studio. Obviously, he's no longer, no longer with us. Um, but yeah, he popped over, had a play, gave the thumbs up, and, and then went back <laughs> on his way. So. Only seal of approval yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, awesome. So in terms of, say, you guys did a lot of um, multiplayer or maybe kind of social elements in the later Fable games that were kind of interesting in terms of um, information popping up in other people's games, being able to join other people's games. Yeah. Is there any of that being introduced into Fable Anniversary? So we didn't want to be detrimental to the core experience. Like I said, you know, I'm floating away with ideas, but we are trying to stay grounded. We appreciate that people are going to want to play it in its original format. Mm. But things like leaderboards provide a really nice additional experience. We're putting in loads of leaderboards. You know, who can kick chickens the furthest in the world? Who right? can that's, fart that, the most? That's an important okay. thing. And uh, so that's where we're investing a lot of our time is to get that worldwide competition via leaderboards. Was there anything you guys had to do in terms of voice acting then to maybe recut stuff? Or? We actually wanted to keep it the same. Okay. Uh, again, it's, it's that nostalgic memory that mm. people have. I will say that um, they've all been remastered so that the compression is, is a lot less than it used to be. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the feedback from the fans has been, you know, don't change the voice acting. We want it to be as it was in 2004. It must be a hard to, uh, line to tie because yes. obviously people are a little less uh, forgiving about yeah. creating this stuff. Uh, the voice acting, obviously, they can remember that person and they want to keep that character. But then when it comes to the graphics, they're like, ah, do whatever you want. Just make it look yeah, great. Right. Just, as long as it looks pretty. Yeah. Uh, so our, our, our director, who's actually with us here at the moment, um, he's very much uh, keen to you know, just make the game look as beautiful as possible. And why not? I mean, mm. we're actually running the game through Unreal. So it's, it's allowed us to have a whole new lighting system. We can have materials for the first time. It's actually a really powerful tool for us to use. And I know that the art team are really enjoying using it. Um, is there any possi possibility of being able to swap back to the old Fable art style maybe during the game? Yeah, so one of the things that I, I briefly showed on the smart glass mm. was the ability to look at Fable 1 as it used to be. And that's how we really want to uh, maintain this past and present feel because I love smart glass when I first heard about it I thought it was an awesome piece of technology and I love the idea that you can actually click on the screenshot and you can actually hold it side by side there's no yeah, swapping yeah. you can directly compare shot to shot and I think that's quite a nice little feature cool I guessing technically it's probably very difficult yeah new architecture and when you think that. about it you know is it is that a good investment you know yeah, yeah. there's so many different things you can invest time in I mean personally I'd rather the game looked better mm. just on its own mm. and stood up on its own and then we use smart glass to utilize all these extra features and uh, i just want to get at least one question in here the chat is going absolutely crazy most people <laughs> just asking for uh, the player to fart uh, <laughs> but can i ask this one eminem stranger um has asked a very good question will yeah. there be any extra missions or bonus stuff that weren't yeah. in uh, the that original? is that is a really good question and like i said you know i want to float off uh, and, and add loads of new stuff but I, our priority right now is to make the best Fable anniversary experience we possibly can. When we finish the project in a few months' time, I'd love to look at DLC. Yeah. One of the great things about Fable Lost Chapters initially, when it was out on the PC in 2005, we had a huge modding community. And, yeah, yeah, and sure. so we can actually look, in, look back into the past and see, hey, what was a really popular mod? What can we bring to people through the, the medium of DLC now? Mm. Uh, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. I would love to, the team would love to, but we just don't want to lose focus right now. Cool. Well, Ted, thank you so much for bringing Fable Anniversary here. Um, it's great to finally have a look at it. Thank when you. will 
people be able to get a hold of it themselves on, on one platform? So currently it's uh, on Xbox 360 and it'll be available on holiday 2013. Oh, that's very close. Holiday? I know. See, we've been in America so <laughs> I know, long. Right? We're talking like it's this. Just, it's holiday, it's not Christmas. It's awesome. Enjoy the rest of your cool. E3, Thank buddy. you very Thanks much. Thanks very much for Cheers. coming along. Uh, stage 2 keeps on rolling. We've got loads of great games coming up, including Scribblenauts Unlimited. Or not Scribblenauts Unlimited. That's been out for ages. What am I talking about? <laughs> Scribblenauts Unmasked. So if you like comic book heroes and you like the Scribblenauts, stick around. We're back in five minutes. Awesome. I hope we